There's the Cessna clock that I was deciding I would fix. Um, once you pull it apart, I've already removed the screws and whatnot. I'm just going to explain what had happened. It's, this clock is really interesting, and I'll write about it in my post, but I didn't really know what I was going to find when I opened this up. I knew it was an electric clock. I figured it'd be a motor. Well, it turns out there really isn't a motor. Not, not in the sense you would think of a motor. What it is, is there's a coil, a solenoid uh, coil here. And you can see it's got a contactor. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little contactor right there. It's riveted to this arm. The arm's on a pivot with a spring. And uh, the contactor being riveted, and this is all uh, steel, uh, is uh, conductive. So one end of the coil, oh, and by the way, the reason this clock wasn't working was this coil had uh, burned out over the course of you know, 48 years plus of use. Um, so I rewound the coil with some 30 gauge uh, hookup wire and one end of the coil, um, I've, and I've put some hot glue in here to kind of keep everything in place, but so you can't really see, but one end of the coil wire uh, is soldered directly to the case of this assembly here. And then the other wire comes over here. Uh, this is plastic, so it's insulated and it's uh, soldered to this post, which is the plus 12 volt post on the back of the clock when you're installing it and hooking it up. So what you then have is, that's the solenoid portion. Well, the way this works, this, this is what I thought was really cool. This is a fully mechanical clock. Um, and it's got a winder right here. Right now the clock is not, it's not working. If I take this winder, and I rotate it about 30 degrees or so. You see the clock is functioning. And if you look in there, you can see the movement is doing what it should. The issue is after about 30 seconds, 45 seconds or so, the energy that's stored in this spring, what's happening when you're moving the winder is you're pulling the spring and you're, you're storing energy and, and you're basically extracting the energy off of that stretched spring to run the clock. At some point, obviously the winder is going to uh, come back into the at rest position. The clock's going to stop. That's where the solenoid comes in. The solenoid um, fits right here. And because, I'm gonna move the winder down a little bit. Because the winder, uh, and the winder also has a, an arm with a contactor, see? So, and you can see they line up. So what's gonna happen is this winder is going to slowly make its way and it's gonna make contact with the solenoid arm contactor. Well, this whole assembly is grounded to the chassis when it fits in there. So this contactor is ground. And as you recall, when we wired it up, the uh, one end of the coil was uh, makes continuity with this arm and contactor. So, uh, and then the other end is the positive. So what happens is when this winder finally makes its way and closes, you see it? When the contactors touch, that closes the circuit. When that happens, the solenoid is energized and this arm pushes the winder down. Now this happens very fast, it slams it down. So when it does that, there's a little bit of inertia in this assembly here that carries this winder past the point that the contactor stops at, which then breaks the circuit so that the solenoid does not remain energized. And now the winder works its way back up. And how that happens, how that winder stays down there is, I don't know that you can see this, but there is a ratchet here. And when the winder is moved, I won't be able to show you very easily. I don't know if you saw that, but there's a ratchet. And then uh, that's locking it into this gear, which is connected to other gears and so on. And um, the energy in the spring, as I mentioned before, pulls it back around. 
and when it makes contact, we start the whole process over again. So that's it. So this clock, what ends up happening is about every, I haven't timed it, uh, every, looks like maybe 45 seconds or so, 30, 45, maybe a minute, somewhere in there, um, it goes to this cycle where the solenoid energizes, slams the winder down, it goes back up, and it just continues to do that. So I'll bet you, I've never paid attention, but I bet you if you were to put an ear to this, it was really quiet, uh, you would hear the clock if you had the same clock in your aircraft, or even some old cars have a very similar design, I found out. You would probably hear about every 45 seconds to a minute, you would hear a click, and that would be the solenoid uh, winding the movement. So um, what I can do is actually I can give a demonstration of this. Um, let me, I've got a 12 volt battery, lithium battery, and I've got a power cable here. So right now the clock is not moving. What I'm going to do, I'd like to do this in a way that you can see. Set it up on here. You'll be looking for the solenoid there. I'm going to ground to the post and I'm going to go 12 volts and we'll see it activate. And there it went. Now the clock is operating. Now I'm going to hold power to it. You can see it's starting to come back. Gonna hold this power to it. You know, the problem is the second hand is touching the surface. Let's do this. It's about to contact. Applying power. And there it just reset. This will continue to happen provided there's power and the solenoid is working. So pretty cool design. I would have never guessed that that's how this functions. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, put it all back together and I will have a properly functioning clock again.